Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose f is a function from a to c and g is a function from b to c. Then, the union of f and g is a function from the union of a and b to c. If and only if, the restriction of f to a and b is equal to the restriction of g to a and b. Now, before we get into the proof, let's remind ourselves what the restriction of a function means. Well, since the intersection of A and B is a subset of A, restricting the domain of F to the domain A and B makes sense. And the way that this works is the restriction of F to A and B is a function from A and B to C. And we have that for all X in A and B, the restriction of F to A and B evaluated at X is equal to F of X. Similarly, the restriction of g to a and b is a function from a and b to c. And it satisfies for all x in a and b, the restriction of g to a and b evaluated at x is equal to g of x. Okay, now we want to prove this statement. And this is a statement containing if and only if. So what we're going to do is we're going to prove if this is true, then this is true. And then we're going to prove if this is true, then this is true. Let's start by proving if this is true, then this is true. And to do that, suppose this is true. So we're supposing that the union of f and g is a function from the union of a and b to c. From here, we want to show that these two functions are equal. And we know that these two functions are both functions from A and B to C. So to show that they're equal, what we want to do is we want to show for all X in the intersection of A and B, the restriction of F to A and B evaluated at X is equal to the restriction of G to A and B evaluated at X. So this is what we want to show in order to show that these two functions are equal. So since we're trying to prove a statement about all elements in the intersection of A and B, let's give ourselves an arbitrary element of the intersection of A and B. Call x. From here, all we want to do is show that this is true. Well, since x is an element of A and B, well, we know that these two statements hold for all elements in A and B. So they must hold for x. Therefore, taking x to be the x here, and taking x to be the x we have here, these two statements must be true. Now remember, we want to show that these two are equal. So it makes sense to try and show that f of x is equal to g of x. Well, we know that the ordered pair x comma f of x is an element of f. And f is a subset of the union of f and g. And similarly, we know that the ordered pair x comma g of x is an element of g. And g is a subset of the union of f and g. So what we see here is that x comma f of x is an element of the union of f and g, and x comma g of x is an element of the union of f and g. Well, since the union of f and g is a function, this means that the value x maps to must be unique. So f of x must be equal to g of x. And since f of x is equal to g of x, this tells us that the restriction of f to a and b evaluated at x is equal to the restriction of g to a and b evaluated at x. And that is precisely what we wanted to show. So what we see here is, given any element x in a and b, it follows that this is true. So we have proven that this is true, and that is exactly what we wanted to show in order to show that these two functions are equal. So we have proven if this is true, then this is true. Now we're going to prove if this is true, then this is true. 
And to do that, suppose this is true. From here, the whole goal is to show that the union of f and g is a function from the union of a and b to c. And to show that that's true, we have two things that we need to show. We need to first show that the union of f and g is a relation from the union of a and b to c. And then we want to show that it's a function from the union of a and b to c. Now to show that the union of f and g is a relation from the union of a and b to c, that means we want to show that the union of f and g is a subset of the union of a and b times c. And after we show this, we want to show that the union of f and g is a function from the union of a and b to c. And what that means is, is we want to show for all x in the union of a and b, there exists a unique y in c such that x comma y is an element of the union of f and g. Okay, now let's show that the first one is true. Well, since f is a function from a to c, this means that f must be a subset of a times c. And similarly, g is a subset of b times c. And a property of subsets and unions of sets is that from here, we have that the union of f and g must be a subset of the union of a times c and b times c. And a property of Cartesian products tells us that this must be equal to the union of a and b times c. So we see that the union of f and g is a subset of the union of a and b times c, which is precisely what we wanted to show. So this shows one is true. Now we want to show that two is true. Well, since we're trying to prove a statement about all elements in the union of a and b, let's give ourselves an arbitrary element of the union of a and b called x. The whole goal with x is to show that there is a unique y in c such that x comma y is an element of the union of f and g. And to prove this statement, there's really two things we need to prove. First, we need to prove that there exists a y in c such that x comma y is an element of the union of f and g. And then we want to prove that y is unique. So let me rewrite this in a more expanded form. We want to prove there exists a y in c such that x comma y is an element of the union of f and g. In the uniqueness portion, we're proving for every two elements, y1 and y2 in C, if x comma y1 is an element of the union of f and g, and x comma y2 is an element of the union of f and g, then y1 is equal to y2. Okay, so let's first prove existence. So, to prove existence, well, we're going to split this up into two cases. Either x is an element of a, or x is an element of b. And in either case, we're going to show that there exists a y in C such that x comma y is an element of the union of f and g. Let's start with case one where x is an element of a. Well, since x is an element of a, we can send x into the function f. We get an output value of f of x. So really, x comma f of x should be an element of f. And f is a subset of the union of f and g. So we see that x comma f of x is an element of the union of f and g. So, this proves existence in this case, because we have shown that there exists a y in C such that x comma y is an element of the union of f and g. Because in particular, if we take y to be f of x, well, yeah, f of x is an element of C because it's an output value of the function f. So f of x is an element of C and x comma f of x is an element of the union of f and g. So this proves existence. So that completes case one. Now let's move on to case two, where x is an element of b. 
Well, since x is an element of b in this case, we can send x into the function g. We get an output value of g of x. So x comma g of x is an element of g. And g is a subset of the union of f and g. So we see that x comma g of x is an element of the union of f and g. And again, this proves existence, right? Because if we take y to be g of x, well then, yeah, g of x is an element of c, since g of x is an output value of the function g. Also, x comma g of x is an element of the union of f and g, because that is what we have right here. So this proves existence in this case. So in either case, we have proven existence. So we have proven the existence portion. Now we're going to prove the uniqueness portion. And we're going to have to move back to the top. To show uniqueness, we're trying to prove this statement. And we're trying to prove the same about every two elements in C. So give me any two elements in C. I'll call them y1 and y2. And with y1 and y2, we want to show if this is true, then this is true. So let's suppose that this is true. The whole goal is to show that this is true. So really, we want to show that y1 is equal to y2. That will prove uniqueness. And to prove y1 is equal to y2, we're going to split this up into four cases. Either x comma y1 and x comma y2 are both elements of f, or x comma y1 and x comma y2 are both elements of g, or x comma y1 is an element of f and x comma y2 is an element of g, or x comma y1 is an element of g and x comma y2 is an element of f. In all four cases, we're going to show that y1 is equal to y2. Must be true. So, let's start with the first case where they're both elements of f. Well, since f is a function, x must map to a unique value. So y1 is equal to y2. So that immediately completes case one. Now let's move on to case two, where they're both elements of G. Well, since G is a function, X must map to a unique value. So Y1 is equal to Y2. So that immediately completes case two. Let's move on to case three, where X comma Y1 is an element of F and X comma Y2 is an element of G. Well, since f is a function from a to c, we know that x is going to be an element of a. Since g is a function from b to c, we know that x is also going to be an element of b. So, since x is an element of a and x is an element of b, we have that x is an element of the intersection of a and b. And now, let's recall that we're working under the assumption that these two functions are equal. Well, since x is an element of the intersection of a and b, and these two guys are both functions from a and b to c, we can send x into those two functions. And since the two functions are equal, their output values should be equal. And then, by these two facts, this guy should be equal to f of x, and this guy should be equal to g of x. But y1 is the value of f at x, so y1 is equal to f of x. And similarly, y2 must be equal to g of x. So this shows that y1 is equal to y2. And so that completes case 3. Let's move on to case 4, where we have x comma y1 is an element of g, and x comma y2 is an element of f. Well, a similar argument as case 3 shows that y1 is equal to y2. So yeah, sorry, I'm not going to do case 4. So what we see here is in all four cases, we have y1 is equal to y2. So we have proven y1 must be equal to y2. So we see given any two elements, y1 and y2 and c, if this is true, then 
y1 is equal to y2. So we have proven this second statement, which means we've proven uniqueness. We've proven both existence and uniqueness under the assumption of some arbitrary x in the union of a and b. So we've proven this entire statement, so this proves 2. So we've proven 1 and 2, which means we've proven the requirements for the union of f and g to be a function from the union of a and b to c. So we've proven if this is true, then this is true. And we've proven both directions of the if and only if, so we've proven this entire statement. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.